I'm Kirk Harnack, your professor here at Streaming University. Welcome back. And this is Chapter 4, Audio Encoders for Streaming, or How to Spot a Fake. A raft of free or nearly free streaming encoders is now available, and all of these run at the application level, just like a browser or Skype or Microsoft Word. And i got to tell you, this is not an ideal approach. Further, it's not possible for a free streaming encoder to contain paid-for licensed coding algorithms unless some other monetization path is required by the software maker. And finally, no free encoder can offer researched and tested audio processing designed specifically for streaming. Most free encoders have no audio processing whatsoever. A much better approach is to design streaming encoders that not only include audio processing and licensed reference code software, but also run in the operating system at the operating system level, that is, as a system service. Now, what about fakes, like your Air Jordan Air? Free streaming encoders are most likely using MPEG encoding algorithms that are open source. Several such software libraries exist and are commonly used. Now, I want you to note that open source does not imply that such coding libraries are free from intellectual property claims. Now, let me say that again. Open source libraries are open source, but it doesn't mean they're free from intellectual property claims. Writers of such open source code are in no position to provide indemnity to manufacturers or to end users. Now, legal frameworks exist in most countries to allow this code to be distributed and used for academic and hobby purposes, but not for commercial purposes. Indeed, these codec software libraries may sometimes only be distributed in their uncompiled state, basically as human-readable code, as this is considered a form of free speech. It's up to a manufacturer or an end user to compile the source code into computer machine code or an interpreted language. So the problem with using this kind of code in your streaming encoder, it's not limited to potential lawsuits over intellectual property. It turns out that the MP3 and the AAC standards apply to the decoding process, not to the encoding process. As such, anyone who's clever enough in the art of psychoacoustic coding can write an encoding algorithm. As long as the resulting data plays OK on the designated decoding software, well, it might be considered compatible. However compatible it may be, such hobbyist encoding software is not going to have the same design care and laboratory testing as the licensed code. In other words, knockoff encoders are really not likely to perform as well or sound as good as the originally designed encoder. Now, what about the good news? Well, the good news for manufacturers and end users is that the cost to properly license these encoding software libraries, that is the real ones, is actually very low. It's nearly insignificant within the cost of paid for commercial encoding software. So when choosing stream encoding software, it's important to insist on 100% licensed software code. When you do this, you'll commit no intellectual property infringement. There'll be no licensing issues for the encoder, no future threats from third parties as the license issuer has indemnified manufacturers and end users, and there's no risk of future lawsuits. Just a few things to remember when you're thinking about what encoder am I going to use? The cost for doing it right and paying for license code is actually extremely minimal.